Hello, my name is Brian Von Konsky. At the time of this recording in early 2015, I have the privilege of serving my profession as chair of the Australian Computer Society Accreditation Committee. In this short video, we'll be exploring the role of the Skills Framework for the Information Age, or SOFIA, Bloom's Taxonomy, and the ACS Core Body of Knowledge in designing and managing ICT curricula. The goal of such a process, of course, is to ensure that our academic institutions are producing graduates that are prepared for professional practice in ICT. Current ACS accreditation guidelines recommend taking a top-down approach to curriculum design and management. This usually begins with the definition of the skill set that will be developed by an academic program in order to prepare graduates for the intended ICT professional role. Curriculum designers then determine the role-specific breadth and depth to which the program will develop the ACS core body of knowledge, along with the ICT role-specific and complementary knowledge necessary to prepare graduates for these roles. Designing skill sets for the intended ICT professional role is usually done using the Skills Framework for the Information Age, or SOFIA. Together with generic skills, version 5 of the SOFIA framework defines 96 specific ICT skills at up to seven levels of autonomy and responsibility. This slide represents the frequency with which words occur in SOFIA skill definitions. It demonstrates SOFIA's focus on ICT skills for or by a business with an emphasis on information, data, processes, standards, and tools in the development of ICT products and services. Academic institutions strive to ensure their programs prepare graduates for professional practice. It therefore makes sense for learning outcomes and career roles to be defined based on the SOFIA standard. SOFIA version 5 is divided into six categories and a number of subcategories. This slide shows the system development subcategory in the solution development and implementation category. It demonstrates that not all skills are practiced at all levels of autonomy and responsibility. For each level for which a skill is defined, a complete definition of that skill is provided in the framework. Most educators will be familiar with Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy describes cognition levels. It places remembering and simple recall at the lowest cognition level and creating and synthesis skills at the highest level. Accreditation currently requires programs to contain at least one semester of advanced study. Advanced study units are defined to be those that build upon earlier discipline knowledge and that require students to demonstrate high cognition levels on Bloom scale. Advanced study units can include the capstone unit. A capstone unit is also an accreditation requirement. Capstone units are those that call upon knowledge and skills from throughout the course and are an excellent way to demonstrate that students are prepared for the intended ICT professional role. The ACS core body of knowledge defines a number of knowledge areas that are further broken down into topics. The CBOC is shared by all ICT professionals to some extent. Some areas of the CBOC are demonstrated in depth for all ICT professionals, regardless of their professional role. However, the extent to which some CBOC areas are demonstrated by ICT professionals is role-specific, and consequently it's necessary for academic programs that are preparing graduates for these roles to provide a rationale for their breadth and depth of CBOC treatment. CBOC topics that must be taught in depth because of their importance to the profession are ICT problem solving, ICT project management, and professional knowledge. Professional knowledge is unpacked to include ethics, teamwork concepts and issues, interpersonal communication, societal, legal, and privacy issues, and the history and status of the discipline. The depth to which ICT professionals need knowledge and skills in technology building is dependent on their ICT professional role. As such, designers of academic programs should develop a rationale for their depth of treatment for topics in the technology building knowledge area. One might expect that a program that prepares graduates for professional roles related to computer science would provide students with greater depth in programming, for example, than would a program preparing students for professional roles related to information systems. The technology building knowledge area includes programming, human computer interaction, systems development, and systems acquisition. A similar role-specific rationale for the depth of treatment of the technology resources area would also be necessary for topics in the technology resources knowledge area. 
This includes hardware and software fundamentals, data and information management, and networking. A role-specific rationale for the depth of treatment for the outcomes management and services management knowledge areas would also be necessary. It might be argued, for example, that all ICT professionals need to know something about ICT governance in the outcomes management knowledge area. However, it's reasonable to make a case that programs developing ICT professional roles in information systems would require governance to be taught to a greater depth than for programs developing professional roles related to computer science. A similar role-specific rationale would be needed for other topics in these two knowledge areas, which include change management, security policy, systems acquisition, service management, and security management. This discussion demonstrates the importance of identifying the graduate career skill sets and professional roles that are to be developed by an academic program as a necessary first step. Only then are curriculum designers prepared to consider the breadth and depth of the CBOC topics in the academic program they're designing. This raises the question, how should the ICT professional roles and the required skills to be developed by an academic program be identified? Several good starting points are available. For example, the Queensland government has defined a range of ICT positions based on SOFIA. These positions span four quadrants, technology application building, technology services, enterprise implementation, and enterprise governance. They define the software designer position to include three SOFIA skills. These are programming software development at level four or enable, and consultancy and technical specialism, both at level five, which is ensure advise. Similarly, an ACS study reported on in the ICT Skills White Paper asked its members to identify their ICT job role and the SOFIA skills and levels necessary to fulfill that role. Here we see the skills reported for the software and apps programmer role. The primary skill reported was the programming software development skill, followed by systems design. Data analysis repository design were reported as equal third. With application support, release and deployment, systems development and management, and testing also deemed to be important skills for this role. Once we've identified the intended career role, how might curriculum designers proceed to use SOFIA, Bloom's Taxonomy, and CBOC to further develop an academic program? Let's consider an example for a hypothetical program in data science. Normally, it would be desirable to state learning outcomes that describe what a data scientist must do or attributes that they must be able to demonstrate. For example, a principal learning outcome for this role defines what a data scientist is as follows. Data scientists consult with clients to recommend and implement approaches leading to new insights and knowledge derived from large data sets to predict outcomes and inform decision making. Other learning outcomes associated with this role are shown on the slide. The next step would be to align these outcomes with the skills in the SOFIA framework. The principal learning outcome in which data scientists recommend and implement approaches leading to new insights and knowledge derived from large data sets is aligned with the SOFIA consultancy skill. Other outcomes are aligned with research, information analysis, technical specialism, data analysis, methods and tools, and the project management SOFIA skills. It should be noted that the ACS accreditation process requires at least one skill to be developed at SOFIA Level 3 or greater. In this instance, however, the SOFIA skills are better positioned at SOFIA Level 5 and Master's Level Study. Similarly, an analysis of the verbs in the learning outcome statements enable the overall Bloom's levels for this program to be identified. The analysis suggests that this program would de demonstrate cognition at the application level and higher, that is, cognition that requires applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. In this example, the learning outcome statements have identified the ICT-specific knowledge and complementary knowledge necessary to produce graduates capable of fulfilling the data scientist career role. As expected, the program will require ICT problem solving, project management, and professional knowledge from the CBOC as well as technology building and technology resources from the CBOC. A rationale would need to be written to justify little or no treatment of topics from outcomes management and services management for this particular course. It is also important to note that there is a strong alignment between SOFIA levels of autonomy and responsibility for ICT skills with Bloom's cognition levels and AQF expectations. How has this been used in practice? 
At RMIT and many other institutions, the ICT curriculum has been mapped to SOFIA, Blooms, and CBOC based on the needs of industry and considering authentic means to assess the skills required for the intended career roles. Similarly, at institutions like the University of Tasmania, SOFIA and CBOC has been used as the basis of a significant course redesign as part of their curriculum renewal process. Their experience demonstrates that SOFIA and CBOC have the capacity to facilitate interaction and dialogue between academic institutions and local industry, and this is done based on a common nomenclature and framework. Their experience has been documented in the proceedings of the Australasian Computing Education Conference in conjunction with the Australasian Computer Science Week. The ACS Computer Professional Education Program, or CPEP, has also been designed in consultation with industry, using SOFIA as a common nomenclature and framework. These cases demonstrate the value of using SOFIA, Bloom's Taxonomy, and CBOC as part of a holistic approach to curriculum design that involves all stakeholders. In particular, they provide for the design of learning outcomes that are tailored to address the professional skills for stated professional roles based on authentic and measurable outcomes. And finally, in closing, I'd like to observe that it's important for the ACS core body of knowledge to be reviewed periodically to ensure its currency and relevance to the Australian ICT industry. And in that spirit, I invite you, members of the Australian uh, ICT industry, academia, and the broader public, to give your input on what does it mean to be an ICT professional, and what attributes are shared by all ICT professionals, regardless of their specialization. Thanks very much.